Hi, everybody. This is Crypto Rich, working with you to get rich with crypto, filling our pockets with crypto profits. And if you're a regular subscriber and viewer of my channel, you will know that lately for the last few months, I've been covering many, many Cosmos projects. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to two representatives from a brand new Cosmos project, finding out all about this. So stay and watch all the way till the end. You can find out how you can participate with this project. Take the first step towards online privacy. Get NordVPN. Find the best cryptocurrency investments. Check out Token Metrics. Use my affiliate link for a discount. Hey, Ivan. Hey, Katza. Thank you so much for making yourselves available. You are two of the team from Universe DAO. Yes? Hey. 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 Yes. Very hey, good. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us over. Nice to meet you. You're so welcome. Do you want to say what it is each of you does with Universe DAO, and then we can get into what is Universe DAO? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm a software engineer and a co-founder of the Universe DAO. Okay. And Katza? I'm just a little black cat. I fly across space and I put a ball to help out people. So this is a launch pad. Ivan and I have known each other when he was an astronaut and back in my cat days. So here we are. Okay, very good. And, and then what is it you do with the project? We're both sort of core contributors to what is eventually going to be the DAO. So mm -hmm. we like to think of it as a project more than a company. And uh, we, we're just like collectively setting things up. Ivan's the GitHub and the technology expert, and I'm pretty much um, everything else, like a cat, cat of all trades. Right. Okay. All right. Like a cat of all trades. Very good. Very good. And I must say, Katza, that's quite a remarkable hairstyle you've got there. Thank okay. you. I just heard them. <laughs> good, 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 good. Now, now, I know a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization, right? So that people can participate through governance tokens and make decisions about the direction of a particular project, but also can make decisions with regards to other matters. So, so in a nutshell, what is Universe DAO about? So um, Universe DAO, uh, in a nutshell, is a cross-chain launchpad, which is powered by a reserve currency protocol uh, and governed by the community. So uh, we help Cosmos first projects launch on our launchpad and get a leg up via IDOs, dev help, uh, setting up validators, um, DEX listings, Kepler integration, and many more. Uh, so yeah, if if, uh, if you're building on Cosmos and if, if um, you have um, a lot of Cosmos projects um, as part of your audience, that's that's sort of our invite for them to stay in touch with us and um yeah we are open to collaborate okay okay so an idea so you so projects that are launching on the cosmos ecosystem using cosmos tendermin ibc protocols and i'm not technically minded right they can use your launchpad to get launched to get validators and to get themselves going yes that's the idea it's basically um giving you a leg up in every way um not just technology but also getting to active validator subsets it's not not an easy feat anymore it can be anywhere between almost a million dollars and if you're a lean team who hasn't raised funds yet it's not the easiest thing to do it's not the easiest to keep up to date with the stacks that um include are included in the cosmos upgrades because cosmos upgrades quite often um not everybody is familiar with the complexities of evmos or cosmosm or are familiar with the wallets that aren't standard a metamask or trust wallet and that's actually where we're trying to bring in some expertise to help people get a leg up in pretty much every way. Okay. So you would advise around marketing, uh, fundraising, technical considerations, how to launch as part of the Cosmos ecosystem, like the whole thing. Like if I wanted to launch Crypto Rich token on Cosmos, I could come to you, get launched on your project. You'd help out in terms of, I don't know, the technical, like I said, the technical considerations, but also marketing and fundraising. Is that correct? Yeah, wow, um, hash rich would be such a good token ticker. But yeah, <laughs> so if, if you bring your spaceship to our little planet, we just attach several pods to your spaceship. So we just become your team for a little while. We launch you as an ideal. We give you our devs. We give you our assistance, our partnerships, our alliances. We advise you because both of us have spent, I think, way too much time uh, funding, exiting, um, running uh, startups, serial entrepreneurs and PCs. So we're just like, um, we're, we're old folks, I guess. Uh, we've been around for like years and, you know, we just help you like your team. Okay. Okay. But why would I come to Universe DAO versus to anywhere else versus to launching myself? I guess one way to answer that would be that um, there aren't too many places today 
that would allow you this kind of help or offer you this kind of expertise. There, there isn't really a format launch pad on Cosmos, not that I know of. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a few projects that are launching just like us, and we're very excited because this is a very large space, and the more the merrier. It's never about competition. Um, but yeah, I think um, I think we're trying to patch a very real need, a very real gap in the ecosystem in general, especially because of Cosmos and its fast finality. We believe more projects should launch here and should have lesser issues launching. But maybe Ivan has a different answer. Yeah. So um, aside from that, we have a hybrid uh, model in terms of economics um, and token architecture. So all the stakers of the Verse token will enjoy multiple streams of income, including uh, income coming from uh, staking rewards, block rewards, and uh, LP fees that are coming from uh, a variety of networks, meaning that our token will be also backed by tier one tokens in the ecosystem like Atom, Juno, and Osmo. Uh, And at the same time, Verse stakers will be uh, getting automatical um, allocations in all the projects that are going to be launched on the launchpad. Oh, no, that to me is interesting. That is interesting. So, okay, so then, because you did mention there's a governance token and also a reserve currency protocol. So then if I hold, what is it, the uni token? What's your token called? It's called Verse. Sorry, say that again, Ivan? Verse. Verse. Okay, V-E-R-S. Verse, that's the universe. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Verse focus. Yeah. If I hold the Verse token, then you're saying that's backed by Juno, Atom, and Osmo. Is that correct? Do I understand that? And plus also from the projects that launch through your DAO, I, the, res, the staking rewards that I receive will include rewards from the various projects. So then as more and more projects launch and are successful, then the income that I get from holding the Verse token will also increase. Have I understood that correctly? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, and uh, it is not limited to just Juno, Adam, and Osmo. We are yeah. uh, planning to collaborate and uh, expand to um, like dozens of networks, like most popular networks in Cosmos ecosystem and also beyond the Cosmos ecosystem uh, to support EVM-based chains as well. So ideally, um, verse token uh, and its value will be supported uh, by diversity of different tokens and networks. So um, when one of these like core tokens grows, it will also mean the growth of value for the verse token. Right, right, right. Okay. And how does the backing work? Um, from the technical point of view, it works through um, diversification of the treasury across multiple chains in form of delegations. We are running validators of our own. Uh, Our Juno validator is in top 20 validators in the network, and we are uh, getting more and more validators up and running, like for Chihuahua, Osmo, um, Cosmos Hub, um, Omniflix One is coming, and then we will get Evmos, because we are planning to to integrate it in our version to to be able to support um, EVM-based chains. Right, right, okay. And then that would would include Eventually, at some point, Ethereum base, Ethereum projects, Binance smart chain projects, Polygon, all the ones that use the Ethereum virtual machine as part of this smart contract functionality. Yes. So our, our MVP is definitely on Cosmosm, but um, Evmos brings EVM to the Cosmos ecosystem. So everything EVM friendly sort of gets sorted out with the Evmos layer. Um, in the future, even as we've mentioned in the versatility paper, which is our light paper, um, we have the lunar eclipse. So Gerald will come on cards at some point in time, and then there'll be several other asteroids from uh, several multi-chain uh, projects that we will integrate with. So the reserve currency is the common denominator for the launch pad. It's the basis on which the launch pad exists. And um, Adam, Juno, and Osmo, of course, but um, we like to think of them as blue chips of several projects. So these three could likely be the blue chips of the Cosmos ecosystem, and then there'd be other blue chips when we go multi-chain. It's just that we, we back uh, the treasury uh, with a reserve um, with the reserves that's strengthened by these blue chips. Right, right. Okay. Okay. And, and now the, the token, the verse token is stakeable anyway. Are you able to say what the APY will be just for staking it? Yeah. Um, so, go sorry. Ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, I'd like to answer that. So, we can, um, we can share an estimate of what an APY could be. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and what I can say for sure that it's going to be a combination of APYs that are uh, coming from different networks. Like, for example, uh, Juno's delegators enjoy like almost 100% APY, like 90% APY, and Osmo is 80%. So yep. depending on the network, so there, there will be a different API per network, but because we also implement uh, automatic compounding and restaking, that API is going to be auto-compounded. So imagine if you have 100% API, um, like a linear one, then it, with daily auto-compounding, you'll get like 300% API. Wow, wow. So, so auto-compounding, how often do you do that? How do you do that? Um, right now, we have auto compounding configured for our Juno validator. Uh, so, um, and at, at this point, we uh, implement that using Prestate app. I'm sure, like many of uh, of cosmonauts are aware of what uh, is Prestate app, and our operator in Prestate app is configured to perform daily restakes. But this value uh, can be changed and optimized depending on. Um, our community needs. So we can do it like twice per day. And you know, there's a balance between the network fees to do automatic restaking and the frequency of restaking. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ivan, this space is moving far too quickly. You know, I, I have Juno staked. I didn't know that I could auto compound my Juno through restake because there's so much going on with this ecosystem and it's growing so fast. So if I were to redelegate to restake I, my Juno, I'd be, it would just automatically auto compound and I wouldn't need to um, click every 24 hours and claim and stake. It would do it for me and probably save me on, on gas fees as well. Cause it would be doing it by bulk. I imagine. Just a yeah. small note, um, restaking is allowed by the validator. It allows the validator to auto compound your rewards. So the validator right. needs to, opt into doing that for its delegators or as a delegator you can opt in for a validator that has that activated like the course. like restake does okay thank you yeah yeah and it's even better than you imagine you don't need to redelegate so you just need to activate basically grant permissions yes. for the validator to perform this action on your behalf validator pays commissions for you, so you don't, don't even pay commissions when validator performs that. Uh, and you don't need to red delegate or undelegate, you know, and have this um, undelegate uh, kind of penalty for like four weeks or three weeks, depending on the yeah. Yeah, unbonding period, uh, depending on the network, it's different. Okay, very good, very good. Thank you so much for that. All right, now I understand you're doing an IDO, but aren't you also doing an airdrop as well? We finished a few epochs of the airdrop. There were several of those social media associated with some of our partnership um, related to some blue chip. The airdrop phase is long over. We're at a stage now where we're doing whitelisted community sale um, allocations. And then we are going to go ahead with a public sale. And then post that, we'll have like an MVP of the launch back. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll come to the public sale that you're doing soon uh, in a moment. But why do, a, for, for Verse and also for the projects that you're going to launch, why do sales anyway you know because one of the ways that projects are growing within cosmos ecosystem is through airdrops um yeah yeah so the answer is that um first of all we are not uh, hosting any seed rounds uh like we don't have private investors uh who will who could potentially you know affect the market and um potentially dump the token we believe that our only investor should be our community. So um, 20% of the token supply goes to the community sale and another 40% of token supply goes to the public sale. So most of the tokens in the, um, in the system will be held by our community. Uh, and also the airdrop kind of growth approach is it's quite temporary. You know, when you just give away uh, a huge amount of tokens uh yeah. sooner or later they just start to depreciate in price and you know you just basically give free money and people who ha who are aiming you know to get free money they most likely will just sell them as soon as they can do that so it's and not yeah yeah it's not like there's no sustainability there at all and this is a long-term launchpad project where you get allocations based on the first token amounts that you hold 
in a mathematical algorithm. It's just not, I mean, if you, if you think about it for, especially for the structure of a project like ours, if we were to do a massive airdrop, we'd basically be giving people money from our treasury to participate in somebody else's repeated IDOs in several other IDOs. It, it just, the whole compounding logic makes um, very little sense um, for for stakeholders or even the subjugation of buying a token to buy into a launchpad or to buy into a project that's launching on a launchpad for the long term. Uh, airdrop, um, massive airdrops on, on certain specific projects um, have very different um, business value propositions. For a launch pad, um, it just effectively doesn't make sense. Right. Okay. No, that, okay. That makes sense. And then the projects, I mean, what sort of auditing do you do on them? How do we know they're viable? Yeah. So for projects, I think we, we've got, um, we just bring in a lot of people with expertise. We have a council of folks who sort of um, vet out different aspects of the projects that, that launch. And, um, you know, I have a, I have a due diligence background myself for several years now. Ivan's been an avid investor on launch pads in the past also. So we, we sort of know how to um, vet new projects. Also, basis initial research and sort of getting to know the team and getting to know their aspirations, whether their aspirations from a technical standpoint are sound enough and can can therefore adapt to what the Cosmos ecosystem is building. And then there's also sort of um, you know outlier teams that want to build something that doesn't really exist in the market and it's going to be hard. Um, and so we want to help them even more to give them a leg up. It's it's some sort of nice little mix of parameters um, how we choose the projects that we'll decide to launch on on universe now but it's still early early days i would say okay all right now the same question could be said of you will be i'm asking of you as well right because you're both um maintaining your anonymity which i have no objection to i cover a lot of privacy projects on my channel anyway but but how can people be certain that your project is viable that you're not going to run off with a bag of atom at the end of the day I think that's an interesting question. Uh, I, I, I want to hear Ivan's thoughts also because this is not something we've ever discussed. But um, I guess it just um, it comes down to the fact that we've just been around for way too long and we know way too many people. And uh, we think people from the ecosystem in the end and we just, everyone just helps, everyone just appears, everyone sort of knows us from bus associations. And I'm guessing the foundational genesis block of folks that launch on the launch pad would be from connections or from people who've worked with us in the past in some capacity or maybe from one degree of separation. Uh, and that's really all I can say at this point. Um, but that's a fair question. Okay. Ivan? Yeah. So uh, from the technical perspective, uh, my profile is uh, not fully anonymous. So you can check my contributions over the last 10 years to various projects. Um, it's, it's easy to do and to see on GitHub. Um, also. Yeah, even though we are uh, anonymous to the general public, um, yeah, we we still um, not fully anonymous, and we still have connections in many organizations and previous projects. So people know us, and people know our and some people know our identity identities. But yeah, we are not disclosing our identities to the general public at least at this point. Right. Okay. Now, one thing I would say uh, with regards to that is. In, you know, I've been doing videos since April 2017, and there are projects that I've come across where the founders haven't um, have been anonymous, and that some of those projects have turned out to be legitimate and they're still going on, and some of them turned out to be illegitimate, and they're no longer going on. But the same could be said of projects where people haven't been anonymous, because some of those projects have turned out to be scams, and some of those projects where people haven't been anonymous are still going on and they're legitimate projects. And for anybody who's watching this, you got to satisfy yourself. You got to do your own due diligence and do not, do not put in more than you can afford to lose. You know, whether it's this project or any other project, I just want to, I think it's important to say that to remind people of that. Do not sell your, your husband, wife, children, houses, cars, clothes, underwear, everything to invest in this or any other project. Only mm -hmm. what you can afford to lose. I think you'd agree with me on that. That's very fair, very, very fair, which is something Ivan and I have also discussed often in that um, we have a community sale, we have a public sale, and we have all of the launchpad projects which will have their own sales. And we've always said, we've always thought that there's always going to be this concentric circles of people. There'll be outsiders, outliers, um, there'll be fence sitters, and there'll, there'll be the initial few people who come into the community. So we're very happy for people to be fence sitters and think things through, see where things are going. 
um, come in, hang out in the Discord, hang out in the communication, hang out in the community channel, uh, community calls, uh, sort of ask us questions and only come in if there's if and when they're satisfied. And that, that's totally fine. We're, we're very okay with it. We understand that this is a project that requires a certain degree of longevity and you know, we'll give it whatever equity and whatever thought we can, but um, you know, always DIYR and never NFT. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Now I'm gonna have all the links in the description below so people can go check out the Twitter and the Telegram and all the other, you know, um, your social media websites so they can do their own due diligence and satisfy themselves should they choose to participate in the IDO. Now, if somebody wanted to do that because it's launching on Tuesday, April the nineteenth, how would they how would they do that? Um, actually, the registration process happens between April 17th and April 19th. Right. So users uh, will be able to go ahead to our website and just sign up for the community sale whitelist. And right after that, we'll draft the winners who will get the whitelist spot in the community sale and enjoy the price discount and, um, and one month's linear vesting for tokens. Um, right after that, uh, we'll be hosting the public sale, which will be available for everyone, uh, and there will no will be no limits in terms of uh, ticket size because for the community sale there is five hundred dollars to five thousand dollars ticket size. The reason is because we don't want to like any user to hold too many tokens and potentially affect the market and you know uh, dump the token and. Uh, hurt our community uh we want it to be as distributed as possible right okay and then um what's the discount offered on the whitelist versus the public sale yeah so for the community sale the token price is 75 cents or 0.75 usd to be precise um during the public sale the price algorithm is dynamic so the price will start at 1.5 usd and will go up to 3.0 USD, depending on the um, depending on the buying pressure and number of participants. Oh, it? So, so the more people that want to buy, the the higher the price. Is that how it will go? Um, yeah. So um, as the public sale um, goes, um, whoever uh, buys earlier will get lower price, and the price will algorithmically grow. Um, until the end of the public sale, so it's it's more um, profitable to purchase it earlier during the public sale than to wait until the end. Right. Okay. And then people pay with UST. Can they pay with any other Cosmos asset? Um, yeah, we've been thinking about accepting other tokens, but as you know, the price volatility for uh, non-stable coin tokens are uh, is you know, quite high nowadays. So yep. uh, just to avoid the price differences and all the um, edge cases with that, uh, we decided to um, to use USD for the public sale and the community sale. Okay, no, okay, that makes sense. And where will the Verse token be listed? And when will it be listed? I imagine, or I hope, osmosis. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is the... Uh, quite popular question, especially now um, in our Discord community and on Twitter. So um, we are going to be listing our token uh, right after the public sale. Uh, the, the initial listing will happen on JunoSwap, uh, followed by Osmosis Zone. Uh, and we are also in talks with um, additional platforms to potentially list our tokens out our token there uh, in terms of when um, well uh, it depends on multiple um, factors I would say and also on our partners and teams because listing is a process of teamwork between multiple projects mm -hmm. so um, we don't want to make some false promises and name like dates for the token listing and then yeah not being able to uh, to keep these dates. Sure, sure, sure. No, I bet, I bet you it's don't. It's going to be pretty standard. Yeah. Sorry, it's going to be pretty standard. You know, your Osmosis, your Juno Swap, your your standard listing. It's yeah. definitely going to get into an LB as soon as tokens um, go out. So it produces immediate utility. Okay, and it's the first token. Is it a Juno asset? 
Yes, as of launch it is the journal at it. Right. Okay. All right. So let's now that you said I got a register f- or anybody's interested, they got a register for the white for the white list. And uh, hopefully I get my f- get my act together. This video will be out on the 18th of April. So people will have time after watching this video. And of course, after subscribing, commenting and liking as well and following me on Odyssey, not on YouTube, because I'm being censored on YouTube. Thank you, YouTube. Is there KYC or is it just simple address registration? No, it was it was not in the ethos of uh, Juno and also Cosmos to do the KYC, a standard KYC, and um, you know we don't we don't want to do GEC style. We don't want to restrict anybody from joining, so there is no KYC. It's just a standard whitelisting process, just to sort of understand the health of the wallet and assume uh, the intentions of the person behind and you know the tokens that they have even that kind of thing. Right. Okay. All right. So then, if I were to invest in this project, and then I I don't know, let's say I get a thousand dollars worth of verse in during the whitelist because then I get a discount and then I I'm holding on to them I'm staking them I'm getting the auto compounding of the staking plus also as you launch more projects then I'll be receiving tokens in those projects like a certain amount proportionate to how much I hold as part of the 20% community pool plus also I will receive staking rewards from those tokens when they launch have I understood that correctly? Yeah, yeah, something along the lines. So essentially, uh, as a first staker, you'll enjoy multiple streams of income. So you'll be able to get uh, tokens of projects that we launch, and these tokens will also back the verse token itself in terms of price and uh, economics. Uh, and you'll also um, share rewards from delegations and staking and auto compounding in form of the verse token itself and uh it will come from the treasury which will be diversified uh into stable coin part and uh token part so there is a split um between ust versus adam osmo juno in the treasury to to keep things diversified and, and healthy right okay yeah. Okay. We have an article on Medium uh, about tokenomics. It has a monetary flow listed out in it, which uh, splits up the um, analysis of the tokens vis-a-vis stables and potential synthetics in the future. Um, and that's uh, we invite anybody to take a look at that. And if you have questions, please come into our Discord and please ask us uh, what you'd yeah. like to know. Very good. And like I said earlier, I'll have all the links in the description below so people can go check that out. Now, what sort of projects are you going to be launching? When's the first one? lined up roughly speaking because i don't think you can give an exact time um yeah so um, our initial focus would be on um projects within the cosmos ecosystem mm-hmm. there are many many projects appearing especially in juno network uh so i think more than 400 projects since the inception of the network so um and there are many many interesting and very promising projects among them so we'll be uh, definitely looking forward to listing one of the juno projects as um, our first uh, project i would say but yeah it's not limited just to juno there are projects appearing on other networks and they're very, some some of them are very very promising okay Okay, can you give us any sort of idea of, of what these projects are about? Um, I think it's uh, a little bit too early to answer this question right now. Very good. I and I do understand, right? And, and you know, people, people watching yeah. this, people like, I want to know now. I want to know now. Well, patience pays in the crypto space. You just have to wait. Yes, but also it's just, you know, I think historically more than 400 tokens have already launched on Juno. And I've lost count of how many are on Cosmos. And they just mushroom in. They, they spring up every single day. So who knows where we'll be after the community sale, after the public sale, who will walk up to us and say, hey, you know what? I just thought of this and I'm going to do it. But we've not figured things out just yet. It just, the space changes so quickly. Yes. that I think, you know, it's just so hard to answer some of these questions. Um, we always struggle with this one. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ivan Katza, is there anything else you want to let us know before we finish up? I think from my side, I just, um, um, instead of shilling the community sale, I, I would just invite everybody into the Discord. Please come join our Discord, have conversations with us, ask us questions about the verse token, ask us 
uh, tell us what you want to see in the launch pad. I mean, we really want this to be by the cosmos, off the cosmos. So we really want to know what features you want to see, uh, what kind of projects you want to see on the launch pad. We really want this to be discussion oriented so that it's easier for us to go ahead with the last step of things when we do renounce to the DAO and the DAO starts to really handle things and already has come to terms with governance and launches and processes and you know SOPs. So um, we really invite you to get in early. Um, even if you don't necessarily want to put in money, just come in, you know, be curious. Just just come in and ask questions. Yes, absolutely. No, that's, yeah. that's that's a really good point, Kat. So I knew about Bitcoin in 2012, but I didn't buy any till 2013, which was still oh. better than waiting till 2014 or 2015 or whenever, right? But in that period, I was examining it. What is this thing? Because there wasn't anything, you know, like that before, like, you know, and there wasn't much information about. It. So I completely get your point about the importance of being curious, even if you don't put any money in. It, you know, it could even happen that somebody comes in, looks at this, looks at this, looks at this, hangs around, and then goes and uses the information that they've gained here somewhere else. That would still be useful. Absolutely. We've, we've also seen people say things like, hey, we're not exactly sure what you're building, but we want to get in on the ground floor, not from an investment perspective, but we want to take roles in a potential DAO. And, we're, you know, you're very welcome to do that also. like there's just no limit to how you can contribute. Yes, great. Thank you. Ivan? Yeah, yeah. and by the way, uh, we are giving away 50 uh, early bird spots in the community sale whitelist to our community members. And criteria is just to join our Discord server, ask useful questions, suggest cool projects that could be listed on our launchpad and help other community members. That's it. Most active and helpful community members will get We'll share 50 whitelist spots. Oh, very good. Very good. Well, there's an incentive. All right. So 50 whitelist spots are up for grabs if you join the Discord server and participate and be active within this community. All right. Anything else for you guys? Not from my side. That was quite fruitful. Just take a look at our versatility paper. I think uh, that has more than enough um, in terms of what we could build for even the next two years. It's uh, fairly ambitious. So. We need people to come and collect around us as we build this together. We, we don't want to do it all by ourselves. Yeah. Great. Katza, so thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, both of you. Thank you for taking time out to explain this to me and to those of you watching. If you're part of the uh, Verse community, please give me the ticker symbol for Verse. If you're part of any community, give me ticker symbols because all those, as com those ticker symbols as comments support my channel grow. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the description below. And uh, please follow me on, on Odyssey join my official Telegram announcements channel and also follow me on Twitter. And between now and when I see you next, please keep filling your pockets with crypto profits. This is Crypto Rich and Crypto Ivan and Crypto Katza signing out. All the best. Bye-bye.